I thank him for who he is, and I thank him for everything that he's done for me. You know, up until 13 years ago, I would have never dreamt I'd have been a pastor. Up until that 13 years ago, I never even thought I'd be a child of God. And I tell you, God can make things happen. And I say this all the time, and I really mean this this morning, the prayer of a righteous man. Ooh, the prayer of a righteous man has you here today. Do you believe that? The prayer of a righteous man has us here today in his place. But now if I wouldn't have waited upon the word of the Lord, I don't know where I'd be at. I wouldn't be as joyful as I am today. I don't know about you guys, but I'm joyful to be a Christian. I don't know about you guys, but I'm happy to know that I'm redeemed. I'm happy to know that Jesus is my Savior. I'm happy to know that I'm not going down there. Oh, Pastor Steve, we're living in hell right now. That's because you want to live in hell. Oh, come on now. Step on that toe. You living in hell because you want to live in hell. I don't want you to live in hell any longer. We can have peace on this earth. Amen. But oh Lord, wait. That's so easy to do. Not. But we have to. It's hard to wait. I've seen some of you in this store before. You don't like waiting. I've seen some of you at the intersections before. You don't like waiting. But when we wait upon the Lord, I guarantee it. It's all going to go well. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk <clears throat> and not faint teach me Lord teach me Lord to wait oh give God a hand this morning amen wait wait Upon the presence of the Lord. I tell you what, that means a lot. Do you realize why so many of the people that live for God do not know the joy of Him? Because they don't wait upon Him. Ooh. Oh, got quiet in the place today. You live for God, I live for God. But there's times that I try to pass God. In fact, there's times that I do pass God. I go right around Him. Amen? And I know. Then i got to think. I just passed a blessing up. As I say all the time, I like my blessings. Amen? Do you like your blessings today? But see, if we wait upon the Lord and ask Him to renew our strength, through the power of God, the Word says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. I want strength. I don't have no strength of my own. I've got to ask God to get me through. Amen. Lord, get me through this day. Lord, you brought me through a lot of days. I'm asking for just one more day. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. Are you worried about tomorrow? Are you worried about Tuesday? Are you worried about next Sunday? I'm not. I'm not even worried about right now. Is anybody here today worried? Thank you. Happy. If you're a Christian, you're going to be happy. Oh, you know what? We spoke about Job. I'm sure there was some times Job frowned. I'm sure there was some times that Job mourned. I'm sure there were some times that he just cried his heart out. That song, Sister Vi, Why Me, Lord? Why Me, Lord? I told my kids in Sunday school this morning, it's all going together. Isn't God good? Confirmation. 
I told my kids this morning, I said, you know, the devil's after this church. Sometimes we want to say, really? Is that what you guys say? Seriously? Yeah, it's real. Sometimes, my friends, we want to give up. Sometimes, my friends, we want to give up. You know why? We don't want to wait upon what God has for us. Now, wait might seem like a silly word to you today. W-A-I-T. But if we wait upon the Lord, He's going to see us through. Now, see, we all go through struggles. Am I right, Sister Ellen? We all go through tribulations. We all go through hard times. We all go through financial problems. We all go through health problems. We all go through job problems. We go through vehicle problems. I could go on and on and on. Spiritually, do you go through them kind of problems? Spiritually? Do you have... Good job, Brother Steve. I hope you have spiritual difficulties. You know why? God is working on you. God is manifesting in you. God is trying to make you stronger. God is trying to make you able to endure the world. Right. right, Brother Derek? God is trying to say, Woo! Look out that door. Man, everybody's so happy right now. We're all smiling. We all got the love of the Lord. But oh, we got to leave after a while, guys. Let me tell you something. When you go make that corner out there today, they're not all Christians going, there's all these people from in here. Steps give all big wave day. No. No. There's people out there going, look at them weirdos. I guess they've been back there, that cult back there behind that shopping center. But see, that's how people are of the world because they don't have the joy of the Lord. Golly, guys, let's open up here today. Amen. All right, now I'm going to preach. Got your Bibles with you this morning? If you have your Bible, say amen. amen. Are you in Psalms yet? Let's go to the book of Psalms. Let's go to the 40th chapter. Amen. <laughs> Sister, I know she's ahead of time today. She's doing good. I want you to take your Bibles this morning. I want you to go to the book of Psalms. I want you to go to the 40th chapter. I've got three little bitty verses. We're going to be out of here real quick today. Amen. Because we're going to wait upon what the pastor has for you today. As you're getting there, Psalms 40, we're going to read Scriptures 1, 2, and 3. I want you to realize, I don't think all of you heard me a while ago when I said this. Do you realize why so many people who live for God doesn't know the joy and the power of the Holy Spirit? It tells us many, many times in the Bible, we must wait. Isaiah 30, 18 is just one example. And I'm just going to read the last part of that scripture. Blessed are all they that wait on him. But now maybe some of you don't want to be blessed. Huh. It'd be crazy not to want that. That tells me, you know, I don't know how many of you out here today is like me. And I don't know if you've ever even noticed this, but I'm real high strung. I mean, I'm really high strung. I had a stranger walk up there and tell me, they said, I go by his car all the time, you look like a jackrabbit running around out here. I said, I don't. I can't help it. What can I say? But being high strung, I believe is okay, especially for God. Now, I want to be high strung, and I want to be high on that man called Jesus. Amen. And I want to know that I have the joy of the Lord. Amen. But when you're high strung, here's my point. It's hard to wait does anybody else have that feeling this morning? 
it, it's hard to stop sometimes and wait upon the Lord. But He's done showed me. It's well worth it. He's done showed me. Let's do that. Done been there. Probably most of you have done been there. Now in saying that, I want you to remember this. No matter what comes up in our lifestyle, no matter what's going on in our personal, private lives, you're going to have to start waiting upon the Lord. You can't quit jumping over His blessings. You can't quit jumping over every time He tries to talk to you. Amen? That's like when something goes on in church, when somebody has a word for the Lord, that'd be like us plowing right through it. Guess what? That's like slapping God in the face. We've got to be careful. Are you with me today? Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you so much for this day. I ask that you would help me with this word that you have for me today. I thank you for the privilege and the honor to be behind this pulpit today. Lord, I ask that every word would be of you and only of you. I ask the same for everyone here. I ask for a total understanding in this place today. If we all agree, please say amen. amen. Psalms 40, verse 1. If you're there, say amen. amen. Let's talk about David a little bit this morning, okay? You know, David patiently, patiently waited for the Lord. And David inclined. And guess what? The Lord heard his cry. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay. Ooh, listen, guys, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. Is that what it says? And he hath put a new song in this old mouth. Even praise unto our God. Listen to this. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Now let me ask you something today. Do you trust in the Lord with all your heart? Oh, let me ask this again. Now listen very carefully before you answer. Do you trust in the Lord today with every ounce of your heart? Mixed emotions, wasn't it? Made you think, didn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I trust in him with all my heart. It's no problem. Better think there for a minute. Come on, guys. Come on. Think. We want to say yes. This is going to hurt. You ready? Sometimes we lie to God. You better believe I trust in you with all my heart, God. Most of time. See, God knows it all. You might fool me today. You might tell me you trust in God with all your heart. I hope and pray that you do. And I'm not saying that all of you don't today. Here's my point. If you don't wait upon the Lord, and if you don't trust in Him with every stitch of your heart, God's not going to bless you That's like He right. could. Right. You like them blessings? Uh huh. Spiritually? Financially? Mm hmm. How about the old body? Most of us in here, the old body is getting kind of old. <coughs> Notice I said most. Okay, some. Some of us in here is getting old. Some of us in here is getting decrepit. But oh, some of us is just starting life. Oh, some of us is just getting life started. I remember when I was his, his age, if I'd have went to church, I'd have been sleeping too. I'm going to wake him up here and make you watch this. You let me get wound up. Everybody wake up again, amen? Let's break these verses down. Are you ready? Number one, David said that he waited patiently for the Lord. Now, I, my King James Version, waited, is all capitalized. It's all in bold letters. I think that means David said, I waited. I waited. 
No, I waited. We got to do that, my friends. It says, I waited. You like this next word? Patiently. Oh, my goodness. Don't you pray for patience. Oh, yes, I will, too. You can pray for patience. I say it's okay. Has anybody ever told you don't pray for that? You better tell them. They better go pray again. Because I can pray for patience. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined my ear. And he heard my cry. Oh, dear Jesus. Oh, dear Jesus, do you hear my cry? <coughs> Sometimes you wonder, does God really hear you, don't you? Sometimes you wonder, is God on vacation? Sometimes you wonder, God, are you on break or something? No, he's always there. Here's everything you say. <laughs> Remember that, everything you say. Catch that? Let me capitalize that. He hears everything. Everything you say. And there might be some things he don't care for what you say. I want God to love everything I say. I want God to be thankful for everything that I say. David said he waited patiently for the Lord to help him. And he turned to me and he heard my cry. Has everybody in here ever cried out to the Lord? We all have, I'm sure. We like an answer back, don't we? We like to know that God really heard our cry. Well, David says that he did. And I believe that. You know, guys, no matter what our troubles, no matter what trials we go through, it's always good. It's always great, I think. To look back and recall the goodness of the Lord. You can just think back. You can just look back at the goodness of the Lord. Everything that he's done for each and every one of us. Number two. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit. Out of the miry clay. And set my feet upon a rock. And established my goings. Are you hearing me this morning? God said that he lifted David up out of the pits of hell. God said he lifted David up out of the pits of despair. God said he brought him up and he said, Come on, boy! It's time to do something. Come on, here I am, David. Come on, here I am, Derek. Come on, here I am, Steve. Come on, Mike, here I am. Come on, Sister Betty, here I am. Ooh, I talked to kids this morning. Here I am. See, God's always here. But God wants to hear that cry. Is that right? See, he appreciated hearing David because David actually said, let me back up. David let go of pride. David let go of that stuff called pride and he said, Lord, here I am. Lord, I'm crying for your mercy today. Lord, I'm crying. I'm asking that you would come and help me today. Sister Cindy, God, please touch my hands. God, I'm crying upon you today. Touch this body. Heal me, God. God doesn't do things halfway. God doesn't do things halfway. God says when he heals us, he's going to heal us. God says when he touches us from the top of his head, our head, to the bottom of our feet, he's going to heal us. Well, Pastor Steve, I don't know about that. I had this ailment for a long time. So did Paul. But let me guarantee all of you something again. I guarantee this. We're all fixing to get healed. We're all fixing to be relieved. We're all about to become that new creature. I don't mean a dinosaur either. I'm talking about a new creature for God. I'm talking about that God's coming soon. Guess what? If God don't touch these infirmities now, 
God guarantees us when we get to heaven, we're going to be perfect. All of you hear that? Brought him up out of that pit. Have you ever been in that sticky stuff? You, you can't quite get that one leg out of that muck, out of that mire. Because here's God, here's Satan. It's hard. God doesn't say anywhere in His Word, it's going to be a pleasure to live for me. It's all good. I'm God. And that's the way it is. You just come lift me. I'll be good. Does God say that? I can't help but say this. Living for God reminds me of a beautiful rose. But I can't help but think climbing up that rose stem. What was there? Ooh, we them things hurt. They feel like them. They feel like they shoot poison into you. But once you get past that pain, Sister Shirley, that hope rope. Sister Shirley, not that thread, but that rope. That rope we're steadily climbing. Amen. Sometimes we fall to the bottom. But let me tell you something. God's so good, he put a knot on the bottom of it. When we get to the bottom, we stop. We're like, thank you, Jesus. Here we go again. Keep that faith. See, David was throwed that hope rope. God lowered that hope rope down to David. And David attached himself to that rope. He started climbing. And as we climb, do you believe this today? God's saying, good job, come on. Don't stop now. Don't stop now. Keep on climbing. Ooh, the hope rope. Mm -mm -mm. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground. Solid ground, guys. I like solid ground, do you? And steadied me as I walked along. Now watch me, guys. Steadied me as I walked along. Do you remember them days? <laughs> you remember them days? Of course, sometimes my wife gets up like that and she don't do nothing but just... You did that this morning too? Bless your heart. Bless your heart. <laughs> Did last night not wear off, or did you have a problem there, sis? <laughs> we all wobble a little bit. We all stumble a little bit. But God told David, ooh, who said that this morning? God's no respecter of person. Is that right? That's right. If God could straighten up David, he would straighten up you. Hey, you're looking at somebody that my wife said couldn't be straightened out, okay? Amen. You're looking at somebody that used to be not real straight. <laughs> you're looking at somebody, come on in, brother. You're looking at somebody that hasn't always been a Christian. You know, I'm so thankful that God didn't come back before 13 years ago. Have you ever thought about that? I'm so thankful I don't know how many days, I don't know how many years you've been saved, but I'm glad didn't come back. I'm glad God didn't come back before that took place. I want heaven to be your home. I want us to be like David. I want God to throw us that rope. I want to be able to climb up that hope rope, and I want to keep on going and say, God, you're my rock. Somebody said something about a rock the other day, and I said, I know who my rock is. My rock is Jesus. And you know, guys, wouldn't you rather have a rock than a pile of sand? See, we used to stand in the sand. Now we stepped over to the rock. See, the rock don't give. Right? The rock doesn't give. That's Jesus. Verse number 3 says this. 
and he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. David said God had given him a new song to sing. A hymn of praise to God. Many will see what he has done and they shall be astounded. I astound myself sometimes. How about you? Seeing how far that I've came. By the mercy of God. But you know what my friends? I had to put my trust in God. I had to give it up. I had to give things up that I liked. I had to give things up of the world. I fought with them for a while. Did you? I fought with them for a while. I'll never forget, after I got saved, I've never been much on music or nothing like that, but I did like the soft rock, basically. Ooh, CCR was my gang, buddy. I like CCR. You ever heard of them? Man, I like CCR. That was my that was my that was my hoodlums, buddy. Don't forget revival, bro. We got a different revival. I went from CC revival to JC revival. Amen. I'm a Jesus Christ revival now, not Credence Clearwater revival. But I said that to tell you this. I'll never forget after I got saved. I thought. Man, I, at least I can still listen to my music. My goodness. Boy, I turn OCCR on. I get to listen to some of them words. I thought, I never noticed them words before. Some of them words is kind of horrible. I'd listen to them for I said, nah, it's me. Clean my ear out. Well, this old mind wanted to hear it. You listen, you hear me? It wanted to hear it because I still like that. That God was saying, that don't sound like me. That doesn't sound like things that I would do. Needless to say, I listen to JCR now. No more CCR. Why did I say that? Let me tell you why. That was a pull. Come on. That was a pull. There was days I'd say, oh, now that's just me saying that. What in the world could be wrong with listening to CCR really and then God kept showing me listen to them words hear them words hear them bad words well there was some days I'd go I'll just block them out of my mind how do you block them out of your mind when it's sitting there playing to you how do you block it out of your mind when it's sitting there going through your mind and I thought God now you're gonna have to help me to make a long story short God said you can't listen to that no more I went, <laughs> thank you, Jesus. I finally got past it. <laughs> I was saved at the time. I'm glad I was saved at the time because guess what? I'd have kept on listening. Here's the thing, Sister Debbie. It wouldn't have convicted me. Oh, you know what most people say? Oh, I don't like conviction. Ooh, I do. I like conviction. You know why I like conviction? God's going, ooh, ooh, boop, 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 boop. Yeah. If, if, if I go out there after church day and buy me a CCR CD and put it in my radio and God doesn't say anything, God doesn't, doesn't quick at me at all, I'm going to be going, God? Hello? You ever did that? Hello? Are you there? Here's my point. Not telling any of you what to do. Not telling any of you what kind of music to listen to. But you better ask God if it's okay. Well, I do this. I don't think WWJD. Well, you better consider real good WWJD. What would Jesus do? Would Jesus do that? Would Jesus listen to that? Would Jesus participate with that? But if I wouldn't have waited upon the Lord if I'd have kept jumping you get my point we keep jumping we keep moving too fast and if we don't wait upon the Lord if I'd have just kept going over that what he was telling me about that radio sure I wouldn't be preaching to you today some of you saying praise the Lord 
No, not really. I'm just thankful that Jesus is my rock. I'm thankful that he pulled me up out of that. I'm thankful that he showed me that. Now, I want to give you four quick little subjects here this morning. Waiting for God to help us is not easy. Does everybody realize that today? If you want to take a note or two, you can. Just four little quick things I want to share with you. Waiting for God to help us is not easy. But David received four benefits, four good things from waiting. Number one, he lifted him out of his despair. See, God lifted me out of despair. You know that song? I'm not going to sing it. Love lifted me. See, love, think about it, guys. Love lifted me up out of despair. Who's love? God. You caught that. Love lifted me from despair. What's despair? All the yucky things you used to go through. All the bad things you used to go through. All the uh, depression times you used to go through. All that stuff you used to go through. God can pick you up out of that. Number two. God set David's feet on solid ground. See, this church, don't look under it when you leave here today either, okay? It's built on solid ground. Like I said, don't look under the church. But the church is on solid ground. Okay? This church has to be set up on solid ground. If the body of Christ is not on solid ground, how am I going to tell you how to live today? How am I going to tell you to let God lead your life when the church itself can't even live for Christ? You know, I thank God, Sister Sue and I do, for all the people that come here. Every single one of you. Every time we thank God. We can't do without our sheep. But we're kind of strict here. We kind of bold here. It's kind of like we got to live for God. Oh, leadership. Oh, ask the leadership what them meetings are about once a month. Hmm. They dread seeing them coming. I know they do. But guys, if this church is not built on the rock, if this church doesn't have a solid foundation, we're condemning God. We are slapping him in the face. So David was thankful. He set him up on solid ground. Are you today? Number three. Halfway there, guys. Steadied him as he walked. I covered that a little bit for you all ago. I don't know about you, but I like how he kind of keeps me in line. It's kind of like some day, some days, I know all of you know this, God's going, he's behind you going, huh? Kind of tapping you on the shoulder, kind of keeping you straight. And then all of a sudden he goes, they got it. They got it. Whoops. They got it. They got it. They got it. They got it. Got it. <laughs> God's good, right? But I'm thankful that he steadied my walk. As I said a while ago, my wife gets up every morning. She goes, thank God for that wall. Thank God for that door. Thank God for that refrigerator. She falls over everything. But once she gets warmed up, oh boy, she's on the roll. Can't help but think of David every, every morning when I see her walk. The last but not least, put a new song of praise in his mouth. Put a new song of praise in his mouth. I know that everybody in here today doesn't like to sing praises out loud. Maybe to yourself. But you know what? We can't be ashamed of what God gives us. Sing that praise. Start off in your car. Just pay attention where you're going. Start singing praises. God gives them to you. Now there's four advantages, I think. That should help you out today. Often, when we receive our blessings, we can't receive them unless we go through the trial of waiting. 
So as I close today, I want you to realize that waiting upon the Lord is very important. I want to ask an altar call this morning. Do you have a problem with waiting? Do you have a excuse or a reason for not waiting? Or do you have a little bit of pride in your life that won't let you wait? I want you to come to the altar this morning with all heads bowed and all eyes closed this morning. As this altar is opened up to the church this morning, if you just want to come to this altar for any reason this morning, that's fine. But I'm opening up for the wait game. I think we need to learn how to wait for the <coughs> blessings of the Lord. Do you remember? They that wait upon the Lord shall be blessed. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They that wait upon the Lord will have the joy of the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord will have the strength of the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord will see many more blessings in their life. They that wait upon the Lord will see differences in their life starting today. They that wait upon the Lord will remove the pride that you have from your system. They that wait upon the Lord will be that example, as 1 Peter 2.21 says, that we can walk in his steps. So the altar is open. I want to ask you to come forth. Let's add another word to the word wait this morning. I think it goes with it hand in hand. Patience. Patience. And don't trample each other down getting up here this morning. Ooh, patience. Gotta have it.